Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Happy Easter! Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Christ is risen! Hallelujah! Christ is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! indeed. Hallelujah! Happy, Happy Easter! Easter. <laughs> Hey Christy, happy Easter! Happy Easter! Woo the sun is I mean, well, probably somewhere the sun is shining, but it's Easter! Woo! <laughs> Jesus! Happy Easter, welcome to worship! Woohoo! Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ has risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship for Sunday, April 4th. It's Easter Sunday. I am greeting you from the daffodil fields of Skagit County. This is the day when we remember the women at the tomb who were astonished to see it empty. And we recall the joy and recognition as Jesus calls to Mary and through her tears, she sees him. It is Mary who is sent to tell the others that she has seen him. I hope you surround yourself with all the symbols of the resurrection today, the butterfly, the lilies, and other flowers that are blooming. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey kids, happy Easter. Lent is over. We are getting ready for church in a few minutes. And I am looking for a special word. Did you bury a special word at your house this year? I think Miss Kathy buried it for us here at Holy Trinity. It's a word that means, yay, God. And we usually don't say it at Lent because it's kind of a quiet time and we're thinking about the days before Jesus died. But it's time to get that word out of hiding and say it a lot of times today. It's a word that kind of rhymes with malafulia. You know what that is? Well, let's look for it. And I'm going to start at the places where there's the most stuff um, hidden or stored away. Let's see. I'm downstairs in the fellowship hall. Did you ever wonder what's behind these big doors at the end of the hall? Let's go in and see what's in here. Whoa, just about everything. There's a Christmas tree. I can see some tables. These are all of the things for Christmas. And this looks like it's for Halloween. Oh, wait a minute. What does it say? Give up. There's too much stuff in here. Oh. All right. Well, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that. I am going to look in the kitchen because that is another place where a lot of things are stored. There's the salt and pepper and the things for the coffee and the tea. Just look what big pots and pans we use in, at church because when we eat together, there are so many of us. Let's see. Okay, I stopped the tape because I didn't think you want to see me looking in all the wrong places. I am going to try this refrigerator. What does it say? This is a refrigerator, not a freezer. Absolutely no leftovers, please. Well, there might be something in here. Oh, there's a note. Does it say it's upstairs? Oh, well, Miss Kathy is kind of a prankster sometimes. I bet she has it somewhere on her desk. Hmm. I don't see it. Oh, it looks like the candy basket is back. Lent is over. She put us all on a candy fast for Lent. Let's see. Okay, I think I know where it is. It is right here. Let's see. I bet it's hiding in this copier. Does it say... Hmm, it's in the sanctuary. Okay. Do you, know, do you know what a sanctuary is? The sanctuary is the part of the church where we worship, where we have church on Sunday. So I am going to go in here and look around. Do you see where we are? This is a place where we worship. Let's see. I wondered if... The word could be hidden in the back of some of these seats, but I don't think so. One year, the special word was hidden in a piano. So I'm going to look in here because Miss Jessica may have swiped the word and put it in there. But I don't see it. You know, there is a, a big storage closet in here. And I am going to go and check in here. Look up there. That is where we have that stick for lighting the candles. Let's look in here. It might be in here. Let's look behind this big cloth here. Oh, this is where we keep the paraments. Those are those colored cloth hangings that we put on front of the front of the altar as the seasons change, and for Easter it's white. 
but I don't think it's in there. Let's see what else is in here. Here are a lot of vases for flowers. Now that is very strange. There's a window here. And there's another window over there. Why would anybody put a window in a closet? Do you have a window in your closet? Well, I don't think it's in here. Let's get out of here. Oh, what does that say? This isn't the sanctuary. This is the chapel. Hmm. Well, that's true. In Holy Trinity, we have two places where we can worship. One of them is the big church. This is the little chapel. But you know, this used to be the sanctuary because this part of the church was built before any of the other parts. That's why there are windows in there. Because when this church was built, you looked out the window and you saw the outdoors because the, the rooms hadn't been added to the building yet. And if you hear, in fact, if you hear that noise, that's because somebody is working on the windows because this chapel is so old that it needs some repair. Well, here we are in the main sanctuary of Holy Trinity. And I am going to start looking in the back because there's a lot of stuff stored back here. There's our harpsichord. And this is where the band keeps their, their amplifiers and some of their instruments when they're not using them. Let's work our way towards the front. I thought the special word might be in the back of one of these pews. Wait a minute, I think I see it. I actually think I see it. <clears throat> this is probably our special word. What does it say? It's in the chancel. Oh, do you know what the chancel is? The chancel is the front part of the church. The part where I'm standing now is called the nave. You know why it's called the nave? It sounds kind of like the word navy, doesn't it? Because when we're in church, we feel like we're all on a ship together. In fact, in the old days, they used to, before there were engines, they had to use oars to, to uh, make the boats go, the ships go. And the sailors would have to sit on long benches and row together. So when we sit together in these pews, we feel like we're all pulling together. Well, you know something? I am... I'm kind of wearing out of looking for things. And I think that children are better than grown-ups at looking for things. So I'm going to ask two little girls that I know to see if they can find our special word up in the chancel. Actually, they're not little girls now. They're all grown up. But I remember when they were little girls. And I think when Easter comes, they think they still are little girls. God for the Lamb who 
slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. The first reading for this Easter morning comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message th spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. second reading for this Easter morning comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Paul writes, Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, 
in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen, linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Grace to you and peace. As yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise up from the dead. Well, we have added some new vocabulary, haven't we, this year? How about the word uh, vaccine hesitancy? I think this refers not to people who are wholehearted followers of that doctor who lost his license for starting the story that vaccines call, cause autism. Vaccine hesitancy refers to people who are nervous about the vaccines for COVID-19. Every doctor or nurse or pharmacist that I know or have seen on TV is urging just about everybody to get the vaccine for your own good and for the public to halt the, uh, the, the development of variants. 
But being hesitant of this new thing is understandable if everyone of your race has some kind of family story of being treated shabbily by the medical system or, or even being experimented upon, or if the warp speed of developing these things hasn't been explained, or the predictable reaction to the shot makes it feel like you're coming down with something. And what's so frustrating to medical people is that the very thing that would do so much good is what people are suspicious of. I know of other people who have avoided a doctor's care in favor of something really outlandish, like swallowing huge amounts of um, coconut oil. Well, somehow reading the story that we, we read every year, this year the witnesses of the empty tomb sent me thinking about the vaccine hesitant. We could call the disciples blessing hesitant because we have accounts of the very people that Jesus spent the most time with, the people that you think would have been believers. Um, he discussed his death with them. And of course, they never wanted to hear about his death. And so they didn't think very much about resurrection. All four of the gospels actually spend as much time talking about the doubt of the disciples and the women at the tomb as they do about Jesus. Now, don't drive yourself crazy by trying to line up all of four Gospels next to each other and trying to make all of the details mesh. In today's reading, Mary Magdalene rushes to tell the, the disciples that the tomb is empty, but she's afraid that someone must have stolen the body. In the other accounts, the women immediately report a resurrection like Jesus had predicted. So which is right? Well, probably both. Uh, we live in a very different world culturally than the people in ancient Palestine did, but in some ways their, their minds probably worked something like ours do. They probably wavered between belief and doubt, just as we do sometimes. Their faith vacillated. I would think in the course of that day, someone in their group probably went through all of the back and forth of, in all of the Gospels. The consistent thread is that with the greatest news, the greatest good news that anyone could imagine, this wonderful resurrection that they had even been told about, his closest friends doubted. Even with the miracles they'd witnessed, their own changed lives, the working assumption was that Jesus coming back as he'd promised couldn't possibly be true. Why? Well, because think of it, how did they decide what they believed? probably from their own experience, what they'd seen with their own eyes, things like that carried more weight than anything that Jesus could have said. How much more blessing, how many more acts of God do you suppose we all miss? Because it's not what we would expect. It's not like anything we've seen before. And next week we have the story of doubting Thomas. Remember he said, if I can't touch those wounds myself, I won't believe. Well, that's just the way we are. But we are also capable of hope and belief in more than what our eyes and ears have experienced in the past. All the Gospels tell about Mary Magdalene and the other women going to the tomb on the third day, as soon as they could prepare spices and get up to the tomb after the Sabbath. At least the spices are in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Even though this enormous stone had been set as a seal on the tomb, and they couldn't possibly have been able to move it. They went anyway. Now, Mary Magdalene had experienced her own personal miracle. She'd had seven demons cast out of her, whatever that means. There were probably just some problems she had that totally consumed her life. And that miracle must have given her boldness. And she set out for the tomb, and she was undeterred by the knowledge of this great big stone. But then she vacillates. And even the sight of two angels in white and seeing the grave clothes arranged in a way that no grave robber or, or intruder would have bothered, bothered with, she assumes that the body has been taken away, as if maybe it was put in the wrong place and the rightful owner wouldn't have that. This back and forth in her mind is just so human. Even, Mary even sees Jesus and she doesn't recognize him. And we don't know if it's that his appearance was so greatly altered. You know, later on, uh, the disciples will see him on the shore from their boat, and they seem to recognize him without much problem. Or maybe she thought that he was the gardener just because no one that she'd ever heard of had ever come back from the dead. 
But then he calls her name. And it's this personal call that tells her instantly that she is in Jesus' presence. In the reading from Corinthians, Paul said that Jesus also appeared to him much later. But it was that personal call from Jesus to him that led him to believe. And the risen Christ is interested in each one of us individually. And when any of us senses that Jesus is near, that he's calling on us, then be open to him. And letting the disciples be our teachers, we see that making ourselves, making the scope of our experiences, the standard of proof of what he might do, that can lead us from belief to doubt. It can lead, lead us from belief to doubt. And then our inner dialogue goes something like, well, I haven't seen a miracle, so I can't believe he'll make a way out of my problem. Or I sense him working in my life, but I can't see how the future is going to turn out. I can't see the future, so I can't believe that he knows. Or maybe somebody laughed at what I think is the plan for my life, or my education, my next job, my retirement. They laughed, so I guess I was being silly to trust Jesus was leading me in that direction. I may read my Bible and believe in a new life, in being born again. I believe that in the abstract. But then not being able to see beyond the limit of my past experiences, my inner me says, well, yes, but I'm coming out of such a mess. Victory in this part of my life is just such an alien concept. I've always shot myself in the foot before. I guess I'll do it again. Or maybe going through a profound loss. If I haven't recovered from it yet, then I guess I never will. You can never heal me from the way I'm feeling right now. I don't know what it feels like to be a fully functioning person without that loved one, or without the relationship, or without my usual health. I don't know what that feels like, so I guess it must be impossible. Just like I haven't known anyone else to come up out of a sealed tomb, so it can't be. That's being blessing resistant, blessing hesitant, suspicious of God's good things, not seeing beyond fears, not trusting beyond my bad memories. Many things are uncertain for us in this time, but finding new ways of dealing with problems, being bold to under, undertake massive steps to repair all the things gone wrong in our society, our country, and around the world. This is another way we can trust and find resurrection or else be paralyzed by doubt. Doubt, because in our memory, we haven't seen reform to the soul of this country in a very long time. And so we're in peril of assuming that God couldn't be making something new. God couldn't be restoring us. Now, I know that talking about social ills doesn't sound very much like personal resurrection and rebirth. But we have to remember that large parts of our Bible deal with restoring whole nations, restoring people as communities. And we make it hard for God to bless us if we refuse to believe. Refuse to believe because God is doing something that we haven't seen before. Peter and the other disciple, maybe it was John, ran to the tomb. And it seems like the second disciple believed. And then we're told they went home. They just went home. Well, that's a verse that lands with a thud. Maybe it was because it says they, they didn't yet understand the scripture that tied that event, the resurrection, to God's ancient plan. The ancient plan was the new plan also for the, the, the disciples. New life for them too. New health and hope in this life. And Paul, who's writing about the 500 or so people uh, who saw the risen Christ at one time, noted that some have died, saying it without much shock or sense of tragedy, as if we should know that this isn't the end for them. At the end of that letter to the Corinthians, he assures us that these people who have died will certainly live again. Mary Magdalene heard Jesus call her name and she believed. And she told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And it seems that for the most part, they didn't believe her right away. And if faith doesn't come quickly and completely for you, that's all right. 
Wherever you are on your journey, don't look back. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This joyful Easter tide, away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morrow. Had Christ, who once was slain, not burst his three day free. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 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 arisen. My flesh in hope shall rest, and for a season slumber. Trump from east to west shall wake the dead in number. Had Christ, who once was slain, not burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now has Christ arisen, arisen. A reason, a reason. Death's flood has lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls from ill, my passing soul dear thee. Christ, who once was slain, not first his three-day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 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 arisen. And now as we're ready to share in Holy Communion together, I would invite you to pause this recording if you need to. Find yourself a bit of bread and a sip of wine or juice. Let us pray. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. O God, praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Make us good stewards of what you have made. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace, especially our own. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those in need of justice. Those who are afraid or confused. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who are dying and those who grieve. We lift up to your care especially Mona, Loretta, David, John, Joanne, Kathy, Sandy, Dorothy, Cannon, and those we name to you now silently or aloud. We pray for patience to keep ourselves safe from illness. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, 
at work, and in our community. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave of himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which was, he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray now using the words that he taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ given for us all. The blood of Christ shed for us all. Now may our gracious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. In the rising of today
is risen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.